course of facial nerve. A, deep to the spine of Henley. Mastoid antrum that's lateral to the labyrinth at, at A. And here we see sigmoid jugular bulb, infralabyrinthine, tegmen, middle fossa, superior petrosal sinus. What do we call this angle here? Sinodural angle. You want to see your sigmoid and working in this area. It's going to be easier if you just get behind the sigmoid. It makes things easier to pull away and our labyrinth. This is the facial recess and above is the fossa and cutis. You always see the uh, short process of the incus pointing toward the tympanic segment of the facial nerve which passes below the lateral canal and then downward. So the labyrinth, this is superior. And you see how this lateral canal, the posterior canal wraps around it. Half is below, half above. And where is the facial nerve? Well, the answer is facial nerve along this area. Where's the common cruise when you look at it lateral? C, at the back end of the superior, up end of the posterior, superior vestibular area, at the anterior end of superior and lateral canal at A, drill damage to facial nerve at D. You could also get it if you drill on the medial to the upside of the superior canal you can bag the geniculate ganglion in that area. So we always drill lower side of superior canal, upside of lateral canal first. Stapedial muscle attached to the neck of the stapes. And this is what recess? Facial, and this is Fossa and cutis, oval window. Here's where you thread the cochlear implant. You work through the facial recess, you look through it, you see the round window and stick a little wire up in there for a cochlear implant. So, and this is the, the endolymphatic <laughs> sac, worth a few cups of coffee there. So, here is just a, a approach through the mastoid then and sigmoid, sinodural angle, middle fossa plate. Uh, what canal? Posterior, wrapping around the back part of the lateral canal. This is the spine of Henley. Okay. This is tympanic cavity corda tympani crossing inner surface of tympanic membrane. What is that? Tube. That dark hole. It's your station tube so that often when they drill out a mastoid, a translab, to prevent CSF leak, they'll plug the eustachian tube uh, since hearing has been lost. Uh, and here we have malleus, incus, stapes, short process of incus, you can use it as a landmark. It always points to tympanic segment of facial that turns downward below which canal? That's lateral. lateral canal. This is the posterior. And then you don't see superior until you work medial over the top of the lateral canal. So here we just see lateral canal. This is facial nerve turning downward, the short process of the incus pointing toward this 
tympanic segment of facial nerve state be setting an oval window. And here we've drilled out the canals. We've saved the anterior end, the ampullated end of the lateral canal. And the facial nerve tympanic segment passes just above the state B setting in the oval window, stapedial muscle. And then here is that ampulla of the lateral canal above the facial nerve. So you want to drill that upside of the lateral canal first. So that spine of Henley is here, external canal, mastoid tip. You drill through this area, where the mastoid antrum comes into view, and uh, facial nerve. This is corda tympani, facial recess, fossa incutus, and you drill this. Commonly, there's a little bridge of bone from the anterior edge of the lateral canal across to the posterior canal wall, and that's called the buttress. Some of you'll drill it and see the buttress, and then that comes out last, and it open, communicates the facial recess and the fossa incutus. And then the deepest canal is the superior. This is lateral canal with a posterior canal wrapped around the back end of it the facial nerve turning downward below the lateral canal, and the view again, uh, superior, lateral, <coughs> posterior. Uh, here we've exposed the endolymphatic <laughs> sac, and you can get into the sac retrosigmoid, or you can identify the sac uh, pre-sigmoid in this retro lab exposure. Uh, now you could do a partial labyrinthectomy. If you take out the superior canal, it increases the access to the middle fossa. And if you take off the posterior canal, it gives a little increased access to posterior fossa. If you plug these openings, you can save hearing in about half the cases. If you get into the lateral canal, it's hard to preserve hearing. So, but you can do a partial labyrinthectomy. And here we've taken out the lateral canal. We still have the ampulated end of it here at the superior vestibular area preserved. Uh, and then you drill out the uh, labyrinth that gives you access to the internal acoustic meatus. Uh, if you need just CP angle here, you can do retro lab, but to get the nerves in the meatus, you need to drill out the labyrinth. This is five, seven, intermedius, eight, Nine, ten, six, motor five. It arises around the superior medial side of the sensory root. Sometimes five or six, seven rootlets coming into the brain stem, superior medial to the sensory root. And here we just see the tympanic membrane, corda tympani, what segment of facial? Mastoid tympanic running above the stapy setting in the oval window. And here's the geniculate ganglion here. If you want to move a facial nerve, then right here is where the greater petrosal nerve arises. If you divide that, you could move the facial nerve posteriorly uh, like this to get in for a transcochlear approach, but that always results in a temporary, complete facial palsy that rarely 
or uncommonly recovers to better than a grade three, which is some eye closure. So once you work around or move the facial nerve back, you can get into the petrous apex, into the cochlea, drill it out in a transcochlear approach, and that, that delivers you through the petrous apex, below five, down to the side of the basilar adjacent six, the exposure looks like this, side of clivus, inferior petrosal sinus, facial nerve is folded backward, this is six, passing through the inferior petrosal sinus, five here, uh, and then you can combine that in the pre-sigmoid approaches with a tempro occipital craniotomy. Here we've drilled out the labyrinth. We see what canal? Faces middle fossa, temporal lobe, superior, posterior, lateral, endolymphatic sac, and in this approach, then, we open the temporal dura, divide across the superior petrosal sinus, down across this dura between the sigmoid and the labyrinth that we call Troutman's triangle. You usually divide through the endolymphatic sac, and this is the posterior fossa exposure, seven, eight, nine, ten. And then we divide the tent, we see five, motor five, seven, intermedius, eight. And then you drill out the labyrinth, you have access to the meatus. Always when we divide the tent, we want to, uh, and open the temporal dura, we want to preserve la bay. It's a important consideration in planning these approaches and then in dividing the tent we always want to preserve fourth nerve this is a translab exposure and then you can move the facial nerve posteriorly drill out the cochlea you're down to the side of the clivus the inferior petrosal sinus sixth nerve basilar artery, fourth nerve, third nerve. So uh, just a, a view of the ossicles. This is, what is that? Well, that's the pedial muscle, the tendon attached to the stapes. Now you're you're sitting inside the vestibule. We pull the stapes out of the oval window. You're looking out at the inside of the tympanic membrane, facial nerve. What segment? Labyrinthine, just before the geniculate ganglion, tympanic segment, mastoid. What is this? tensor tympani. It attaches to the malleus uh, and then crossing the inner surface of the tympanic membrane, corda tympani. Well, I know that took a long time. Uh, I hope it got you oriented to some of the things that we're going to be doing. Thank you.